and the case was heard and they were uh, the organizers uh, were jailed for life okay so there you see uh, workers are struggling workers are fighting but the manner in which uh, the current regime comes very heavily upon workers criminalizing workers resistance and this is happening across the country they are going after this is not kind of you know um, um, kind of um, popular political narrative but it has become um, a kind of uh, you know kind of an idea that seems to appeal to the middle class okay so now if i were to problematize this idea that how to organize um, and if you want to really talk about the limitations to this that how to organize people then it is not only about capitalists and workers but it is also about the society that exists around the middle class we have to critically analyze the nature of middle class that is emerging and there is no middle class now there are you know upper echelons in the class in the middle class also you have lower middle class that aspire to be middle class joining the world of middle class and you have higher you know upper middle class so which seems to have kind of you know uh, seems to have acquired this understanding that uh, you know all this you know uh, all this privatization that is happening and 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 rapid shrinking of this the control of the state on this um, privatized affairs uh, is is something which is highly desired okay uh now again the and why is this uh, appealing to people there is another problem that is the kind of ideological shifts that have occurred uh not only here but in other parts of the world but the right wing in this country is more regressive and more archaic okay that is uh that is more dangerous okay it doesn't really uh it is it doesn't really talk about it doesn't want to uh sit across the table and talk it is on the contrary criminalizing if there is any political opposition now any civilized society you have this basic discourse that you talk to each other but this regime or its foot soldiers are terming people who want to secure the rights and the privileges of the working class i mean it's very unfortunate that i would not want to call uh, i would not would not want to use the term working class because working class as i said is fragmented okay you have a very uh, secure privileged working class uh, and on the other hand you have extremely vulnerable um masses or the multitudes now how to address this problem i mean the 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 the, the title to this talk is extremely catchy extremely interesting you know but when you look at the kind of working conditions that exist we give uh, uh, an example of domestic workers but there have been other sectors construction industry for example sanitation workers for example we have heard um, you know uh, extremely uh, shocking narratives here on the campus itself that how people having spent their labor power continue to be denied wages okay now how i mean what could be more outrageous than this that you work you deserve wages but then you are not paid wages this is not only this is not only uh, you know this is not a phenomenon that is found in this university this is everywhere i work in bombay um, i see municipal corp i mean um, uh, municipal corporate uh, manual scavengers sweepers in bombay municipal corporation most of these workers are contract workers they are on contract they work alongside the permanent um, counterparts of comrade whatever term you uh, you choose to use and this is something shocking that i also before i i pointed out quoting of some that this labor arrest of this 30 40 years ago this term would not have any relevance but the manner in which the indian economy is being uh, freed from the from the control of the state and privatized you have this phenomenon called aristocracy uh is very visible and prominent now how to resolve this problem 
formal sector the formal sector is rapidly shrinking informal sector is spreading like wildfire and informal sector is also not an homogeneous not a homogeneous entity our struggle becomes doubly triply difficult because this <coughs> this sector an organized sector that is a, a, you know we call is highly fragmented heterogeneous and it becomes difficult even if you think of organizing them they don't have one employer domestic workers is a slightly you know uh, different the uh, sector uh, because they may have uh, uh, employers for a year or two there it becomes relatively easier to organize them but for example you know naka workers you have construction workers you have uh, uh, you know uh, these workers who work here students raise their issues they fight for them but what happens outside what happens to um, um hawkers hmm? so there is a huge task before us if you really want to talk about uh, you know securing certain rights for workers uh, given the hostility that middle class espouses against workers that is what i i, I think is been happening um so that is that is what i i think it's it's, it's uh, so in that sense i believe um our task is uh, doubly difficult now atomization and flexibilization uh, automation and flexibilization now lot of things uh, let us let me talk about it sector it sector is such a sector that you will find um a great representation of those who support this right wing dispensation okay uh they would want to contribute their energy because they get paid very well and that contribution comes at the cost of their physical well being so how to vent out the frustration then this right wing narrative i may be wrong okay but then right right wing narrative comes to be embraced this is one of the reasons that we find um in india as to why this narrative these are educated highly educated people okay they come from technical background they don't read social sciences therefore they are illiterate or they are ignorant no that is that is not the uh, that's not what i'm saying and nobody should have that 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 uh, illusion okay if these people who are technically highly skilled come to acquire such rabid views then how to address that so this is one of the extremely difficult tasks that 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 is in front of us okay i'm talking about all this fragmentation and flexibilization people are like in certain sections in certain areas they embrace flexibility they come to believe that it helps them but no it fragments them that is how capital works we internalize all this discourse also sir very rightly pointed out we participate in this discourse to reproduce these structures when you involve yourself in reproducing these structures you don't really see anything problematic in that that is what has been happening okay so then um you have i mean there is so much of fragmentation in this you know the working world of this country uh certain sections certain areas certain nature lands continue to be dominated by upper castes certain areas are you know quote and quote monopolized by lower caste when it comes to sanitation um who are these people who work in sanitation most if not all come from ex untouchable back and those who had been similarly categorized denotified tribes ex criminal <coughs> tribes 
Now when, <coughs> now this happens in uh, municipalities, small towns, villages. But when you come to uh, when you come to the city, when you, if you go to these malls, the people who work there as cleaners and sweepers, they come from different backgrounds. Okay, lot of these, um, my student is studying uh, toilet cleaners in, in in Delhi, and she interviewed these contractors. One of the uh, one of the criteria that these people would expect to to to, to have these workers is that uh, you should uh, you should be fair skinned because the people who visit to the malls they are rich and affluent people so they would not want to see a dark skin emaciated looking um, sweeper okay and they also come from different kinds of caste background as far as automation is concerned even if you think of introducing machines into this sector uh, into this sector do you really think that people who be who work who deal with uh, this kind of work would have the capital to uh, invest into machines because contract system is basically um, uh, is seen to be enabling okay you free the formal sector from the clutches of the state and privatize it so that it will increase efficiency but it is a myth what is happening on the contrary you have seen you see rapid flexibilization fragmentation of workers now <clears throat> there is no unemployment in india there is underemployment people do not they can't earn enough wages from one job i am talking about construction workers as well as sanitation workers so they work with two to three contractors and they apparently believe that it helps them because they go to work according to their convenience but i mean now um they decided to work that way or their body their mind has been structured in such a way by this practice that they have come to internalize this <coughs> as their own choice okay so that now this this imposition of certain logic is being embraced as choice it is i would call in marx and terms a uh, false consciousness okay now you believe they are you know your employer is flexible enough to entertain you these people work with two to three contractors during the whole day early in the morning for 3 hours then second uh, shift begins at uh, you know in the in the afternoon and third in the evening there is not much difference in wages but you think that you work with three employers three contractors and we have seen in in the context of jnu how contractors and these institutions that hire these contractors uh, harass and play fits between themselves okay there is no record of workers these contractors do not maintain any register we have seen here this happens in bombay this happens in aurangabad pune everywhere wherever i have been i have seen this workers are being anonymized why because if something happens then the workers uh, the contractor will have to compensate <coughs> workers will be if any accident happens workers do not have any choice they work now you may say that why do have, why uh, why do they have to work but the situation is such that uh, they they also seem to have reconciled with this what we need is huge amount of politicization political consciousness but again the you know the fragmentation is so is such that uh, how many sectors will be born um, addressing uh construction industry you have i i spoke about sanitation uh then you have um, uh, bd workers for example um rina agarwala those who get uh, rina agarwala's work would know that you know she is uh, 
she thinks that these workers should start treating themselves as citizens of the country and instead of employ instead of addressing or instead of talking to their employer they should talk to the state okay uh, because they are citizens employers won't do anything now to some extent this is this has been quite helpful okay this is one area that i i hope i'll come back later <coughs> now upsurge of the right wing and the manner in which uh informal sector is being seen as a as a as a constituency to play their politics recently uh, in uh, in many places beginning with the state of karnataka uh muslim members of the left to run their uh, shops in the areas or in the in the village fairs um now why because those people's religious sentiments would get hurt it's a kind of punishment act beginning with um cow slaughter ban okay it's a religious issue i mean it's a basically it's an issue that is uh being packaged and repackaged in religious terms to exploit people's sentiments and through that <coughs> this hate mongering has become mainstream now i don't have to tell you uh that how these people are being patronized by the state by the by the powers that be but we should look at it not as a religious issue but as a working class issue as issues relate uh, uh, with regard to wages if these people are being boycotted and i would like to propose this idea if these people are being boycotted if they are being uh, if they are boycotted on a regular basis the people who boycotted them need to be held accountable by filing cases against them to court it is very important i mean we should not really basic we should not really uh um be dependent upon one form of politics we should use as many institutions as possible to strengthen a, a, a struggle politicization of the issues is highly desirable without that you can't really construct uh, political narrative um appealing to the uh, you know uh, the the highly problematic civil society and then they recourse to law okay these people what to do they they put soldiers on the right wing if you say something you would immediately be dragged to court okay uh so workers also working class of india trade unions should also try to adopt this strategy as much as possible individuals who are responsible organizations who are responsible for giving these kind of calls this is deprivation of of a working class whatever religion that class belongs to people are being deprived of access to their wages to their earnings <laughs> so it's a serious issue it is not religious or political uh, you know <clears throat> issue it is it is about uh, you know uh, 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 in it, uh, it is about depriving people of having access to their wages means uh, uh, depriving them of having access to means of wages so politicization is one thing taking recourse to law is another because state institutions need to be involved political parties which are you know their single point agenda is to privatize as many sectors as possible okay they have set the goal they have people in their kitty in their pockets people who have huge uh, amount of capital to invest and they sell this you know uh, in that beautiful looking package people uh, uh, private and public partnership okay there is there is there is no public there state represents us it we we, are, we we expect the state to control to exercise a great deal of control over these tendencies that are that accumulate depriving workers of their legitimate right so it is between the regime whichever regime okay 
Indian economy has been restructured since in 1991. Some people would go back to 80s. So what we see in the last 30 decades, what we have seen is that there is a very consistent effort attempt on the part of the whichever political regime comes to power to protect the interests of the capital. Okay. Now you have your political adversary, adversary, you have your social adversary, that is middle class, I suppose, uh, and your, uh, you know, uh, and, and then, then, then uh, I think most importantly, and which is highly problematic to deal with, is that the kind of idea, the kind of notions, understanding that people have internalized about uh, their everyday working world. How would you free these people of all these crazy ideas. They have almost reconciled. If you go to any slum, go to any construction site and talk to those people, they apparently believe that they are responsible for creating these circumstances, which is, you know, which is highly ridiculous, it's laughable. Why? Because I think we also fail in, um, in, in, in politicizing this nature of uh, economy and the kind of working and politics that we have. Okay, we have come to accept now that uh, there are working classes. So if you if you internalize this idea, then it becomes doubly difficult. We'll have to empty people's mind. We have to be, you know, it's a it's a huge Herculean task. Okay, now entertaining socialist ideas that having a very strong state exercising control over economic affairs of the state. People, uh, people laugh at us. Why? Because the rampant privatization of India's economy is so rapid, so rampant that uh, it becomes difficult. And the kind of uh, political representation. Uh, if workers lose faith in these egalitarian ideas in politics. I believe, I believe that uh, these people, informal sector people would want political representation. But then, as I pointed out before, that it is a very big task uh, for us to create that kind of consciousness. Two clerks working in the same office, one is permanent uh, and the other one is temporary. The permanent guy has no qualms in exploiting his own support, uh, his own counterpart. Forget about sanitation workers who come from certain kind of background uh, and another set of workers who, say for example, uh, uh, this, this, these people who work in IT. Uh, IT sector. It is very difficult to see the sense of uh, belonging to the same world. It's a highly um, desirable idea. But it seems that uh, people don't really find it very desirable. And not because uh, they would want it to be like that, but the discourse is such that they have acquired this logic of securing their own interest. Okay? So think of uh, these JNU sanitary staff, I mean sanitary workers who are hired, and those who are hired for clerical work, temporarily. These people have been struggling for uh, six, seven months, more than a year. Okay, the last mania, uh, it started all during this time. I would expect that, I would have expected uh, this temporary class coming out in their support. Why did not it happen? Caste continues to exist in this country whether you like it or not. 
okay we continue to believe that certain kind of work needs to be done by only those you know they have been born to uh, clean your shit we are we are talking about 21st century and this is a reality so the moment this sector is mechanized do you really think that uh, uh, these people are going to be liberated from this from this hell hole a few years ago there is a small town in karnataka gulbarga so the gulbarga municipal corporation decided municipality decided that uh, uh, it would invite uh, tenders from contractors to give contract work sanitation work cleaning shit and all of that so one sanitation worker who appeared to be politically quite conscious decided that he would also file his papers apply for contract he didn't get it so the solution to protest the solution that he found was to protest and in what form in what manner he smeared his entire body with human excreta and went and protested in front of those municipal officers what was the result municipal officers filed a police complaint against him saying that he hurt their sentiments because you know foul smell foul smell uh, hurt their sentiments the guy was arrested later on the whole issue became acquired you know with political overtones and then he was released but this is what has been happening in this country so even if you think of mechanizing introducing machines to deal with this kind of work what would happen to these people in fact it should happen this sector need, needs to be mechanized machine needs to be introduced at least these people would stop going into the hello but then another moral question that arises what would happen to their uh, uh, you know living where would they find work the state should at least to those who work in this section or uh, in this in this sector should provide alternative uh mechanisms give them bank loans to start but then the problem again that then who do this work i seriously doubt in the next 20 25 years this sector is not going to be mechanized why because there is a mindset that believes that uh, you know <coughs> this is and that mindset is i think getting stronger and stronger because of the kind of political uh, uh regime we have we talk about swachh bharat okay what is the solution to keep bharat swachh construct more toilets and who clean those toilets dalits or those who have been working so all this you know this narrative uh uh is not something that only the regime is responsible but the society at large uh needs to be you know needs to think but you know the caste is so and the, the caste system is so strong in this society that you don't really want to dethrone or upstage this legacy that you have inherited from your earlier generations wherever indians have gone it whether it is the uk or the us wherever upper caste indians have gone lots of these recent examples will tell you that these people practice caste cisco's example most recent google did not want to discuss caste because it is anti hindu uh <clears throat> dalits of you know uh, i mean uh, british dalits a very strange term british dalits they try to introduce anti caste bill in british parliament the foot soldiers of hindu right wing didn't let that happen they influenced the political class british political class and then the bill was defeated so all this purity pollution nonsense spreads so in these countries there now how difficult the very difficult that job for political activists like us here to have this decision so it is not only about um capitalism capitalism is also uh, uh, you know kind of um 
it's where both it is both capitalism as well as brahmanism so you have therefore it is doubly difficult for us for, for us to to address this issue informal sector and 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 there are there are sub sectors in the informal sectors that have uh, these these extremely complex uh, areas and how to address these areas as i pointed out before um fragmentation how to address that flexibilization extremely appealing ideas i can work from home home based workers home based workers are told by the by the, by the contractors who give them work you don't have to go anywhere else ghar pe kaam karo ghar ka bhi kaam hoga ye bhi kaam hoga aur paise kamao paise kama sakte hain aap ghar pe baithe baithe so these are the idea these are the you know these are the logic that are being sold to people and you access because ha ah, ghar pe baithe kaam karna hai but you end up working more more than you your family members also end up uh, you know contributing to that work what are going to be paid you will have the happiness of finishing that work early because your family members contributed to it but are they going to be paid no so there are lots of these minute areas that you know how to how to uh, address this 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 these areas and then as per the quality of work then you know people's values also change so that is why i mean we have a very difficult i don't want to sound very pessimistic okay but then that is what the situation is this rampant privatization you know in the name of people that is being embraced in the name of efficiency how to address it uh i very strongly believe in trade union politics okay that's the only solution organize people as rapidly as intensely as possible constant politicization of issues exposing these people okay uh and of course addressing archaic social structures that continue to influence our mind gender for example caste i or all these folk religion there is very little that has been studied religion and economy the relationship between religion and economy i think i should i mean you people should think of problematizing this this relationship between economy and religion and the kind of influence that religion continues to exert uh, on india's economy weber was highly wrong okay that only you know protestant ethic creates um entrepreneurialism it creates capitalists and then who go on distributing whatever they earn uh into their people hinduism confucianism all these non western religions don't really create that kind of space therefore capitalism did not flourish in non western uh, countries we have capitalists who are buying properties abroad huh so uh, so whether it is western it's not about capitalists what kind of background this capitalist come, comes from it is the tendency this this excessive accumulation is a problem huge problem and that that tendency is uh here in this in this country is also um aided by certain archaic structures so therefore at least in this part of the country in this part of the world it becomes doubly difficult for us in western parts of the world lot of this informalization is protected by the state even in this country for example i mean um what's the name um i'm forgetting the name of that scholar who studied malls in calcutta uh from cambridge oh 
so there uh, these people these young educated workers take it upon themselves to increase more profit so that they are going to be rewarded highly there you will find some difference you know they are their 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 health is protected their wages are 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 better but again it is it is at the cost of uh, their own body and mind and physical well being so exploitation is rampant everywhere but some people do not really talk about it because they get paid more in areas sectors that deal with lot of manual labor there is exploitation but people have become so vulnerable that if if, if they think of protesting they think that they are going to be dismissed from work because there is no protection state doesn't really care about um then their interest what what happened in um, i pointed out before the state of haryana blatantly supported the maruti suzuki company management allowed police to enter the the the, the company's premises and then police went on beating people up arresting them and then the rest is history so if you talk in favor of in, in support of workers then your politics is also going to be criminalized and we have seen that here okay we have seen that in what happened uh, uh, you know against uh, this anti ca protests people are systematically hounded out arrested and some of these people are still in jail but on the other hand you have foot soldiers of this regime they enjoy extra privileges okay so it basically it is it is both this this uh you know capitalistic tendency and religion but at the same time uh the traditional structures that continue to um give a very rabid identity to the religion that is practiced here so therefore it becomes uh, you know i i i'd like to come back to this idea that in title um crazy leftist idea which is highly appealing to everyone but given the given the nature of india's economy that exists out there we need to ensure uh having a sunday as a holiday is not enough protecting the well being well being of these workers solid robust protection in terms of access to health uh, you know benefits uh regular wages protection if they meet with an accident while working these are basic things any human being that sees another human being in pain or you know uh should be able to provide uh, should be able to be given help but that doesn't happen if you meet with an accident you are sent home then you spend money time and then when you get better then come back and join and if you make noise about that then you are not going to be you are never going to be taken that is that's the that is the predominant strategy in every every sector whether it is construction sanitation uh, anything okay so having a having a holiday on sunday is 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 something which is although highly desirable but you know um, it's a it's a it's a you know it's a it's a small um it's a it's a way you know um, it's not enough okay so uh, it's more than that we need more than that uh well i think i should stop here and if guys have any questions i can go on i have a problem but then uh yeah thank you i think uh, talking about today's times it's hard not to talk about the times today and uh, as sir ne bataya ki matlab jo karnataka mein hua hum log ne dekha ki halal ban ke naam par kaise khas kar ke musalman samuday ke jo rozgar ke jitne bhi hai is pe hamla kiya gaya 
के नाम पे शिक्षा के अधिकार पर हमला किया गया या इलेक्शन ड्राइव के नाम पर राइट टू हाउसिंग या राइट टू द सिटी इस पर हमला किया जा रहा है तरह तरीके की ये जो अधिकार है इसको छीना जा रहा है और उसको कम्युनलाइज किया जा रहा है इसके खिलाफ आज ये कोई सिर्फ सेक्युलर मुद्दा नहीं है ये आज मजदूर आंदोलन का मुद्दा है और मतलब अभी आज के दिन में जब हम इस इस टॉपिक पे ही बात कर रहे हैं हम लोग देखते हैं कि मतलब मजदूर आंदोलन जब हम लोग पिछले भी डिस्कशन में बार बार इसके लिए लौट के आते हैं कि मजदूर आंदोलन जब हम बात करते हैं वो बस एक मजदूर एक अलग खास दुनिया से कटा हुआ कोई एक और हिस्सा नहीं बल्कि मजदूर मतलब देश की बहुसंख्यक आबादी दुनिया की बहुसंख्यक आबादी और इनफॉर्मल सेक्टर के आ, केस में अगर हम लोग 97 परसेंट देश की बात कर रहे हैं तब पूरे देश के मुक्ति की बात है हो जाती है आ, और उसमें जो सामाजिक रिश्ते हमारे बीच में है उसको डेमोक्रेटाइज करने के उसको जड़ से उखाड़ फेंक के एक नए तरीके का समाज की कल्पना करने की आज हम लोग बात कर रहे हैं बस सर ने जे के सैनिटेशन वर्कर्स का ही एग्जाम्पल दिया और क्योंकि आज हम लोग फ्लेक्सीबलाइजेशन पर बात कर रहे हैं मतलब कोविड नाइन्टीन होने के बाद से जो ये हुआ है कि सब लोग वर्क फ्रॉम होम को सेलिब्रेट कर रहे हैं जो मिडिल क्लास है वो बहुत खुश है कि अब वो घर से काम कर सकते हैं उसका कोई फिक्स ऑफिस आवर नहीं है तो कोई वर्क फ्रॉम बीच कर रहा है वर्क फ्रॉम गोवा कर रहा है वर्क फ्रॉम हिल कर रहा है और अलग अलग ये है लेकिन फ्लेक्सीबलाइजेशन जब ज़्यादातर आबादी पर ऊपर आता है तब फ्लेक्सीबलाइजेशन का मतलब है और एक्सप्लोइटेशन और कम वर्क और पिछले महीने ही जब जे के सफाई कर्मी स्ट्राइक पे गए उनमें से एक जो मांग था वो था 26 दिन का पेड वर्क मतलब वो डिमांड ही था कि हम लोग को और काम दिया जाए कि क्योंकि अगर हमको और काम नहीं दिया जाएगा तो हमारी चटनी होगी या हमारे वेतन पर हमला किया जाएगा तो ये फ्लेक्सिबलाइजेशन को हम उसका क्या एक्चुअल उद्देश्य है और उसको कैसे दिखाया जाता है इसको आज हम लोग सेपरेट कर पाए इसकी सख्त जरूरत है और साथ ही साथ इसीलिए हम लोग इंस्पिरेशन लेते हैं सत्यशोधक समाज और आगे चल के बॉम्बे के मिल वर्कर्स मूवमेंट से उसी समय महार सत्याग्रह जो हो रहा है जब वहाँ पे पब्लिक वेल्थ के एक्सेस को एक एंटी कास्ट इशू के हिसाब से उठाया जा रहा है या उसी तरीके से जब बॉम्बे के बस्तियों में चौल में डेजली रोड फ्रेंड सर्कल बन रहे हैं तरह तरीके के और संगठन बन रहे हैं जो केवल फैक्ट्री के अंदर तक सीमित नहीं है लेकिन जिस दुनिया में मजदूर वर्ग आबादी रहती है वहां तक जाके संगठित करने में मजदूर आंदोलन एक भूमिका पालन कर रही है कॉम्प्रेट आर्टे मोड़े से लेके बाबूराव बाबुल और भी अलग अलग शहीद हुए इस मूवमेंट में तो इसको याद करते हैं बस एक अनाउंसमेंट करना चाहूँगा आगे हम शर सबका ही सवाल होगा सर के लिए क्वेश्चन आंसर सेशन में हम लोग जाएंगे बस एक अनाउंसमेंट था कि अगले हफ्ते 16 जून को इंटरनेशनल डोमेस्टिक वर्कर्स डे के हिसाब से मनाया जाता है और डोमेस्टिक वर्कर्स एक ऐसा सेक्शन है जो पिछले 30 साल में अगर महिलाएं वर्कफोर्स में पेड लेबर में आ रही है तो उसकी सबसे बड़ी आबादी डोमेस्टिक वर्क में जा रही है मतलब किसी और के घर में पेड लेबर करना जो ट्रेडिशनली जो महिलाएं काम घर पे ही करता है तो ये जो आरके 